I took a Hoos Kvarna FS450 and turned it into an FS450R. This is the second part of my build series that I started quite a long time back. Now, because of the COVID-19 crisis, I had to wait a long time to get the parts from Sweden, Italy, and Malaysia. My goal with this build is to make it into the ultimate racing supermoto while keeping it as clean as possible. I changed the build quite a lot from my first plan. So let's walk through the bike from the front to the rear end. I have a double disc braking system from PC5 Cobra that's fitted to custom fork bottoms from the same company that's fitted to a pair of RX48 Elin's front forks. In my personal opinion, the double disc braking system provides better brake feel, and you also have to use less brake pressure for the same amount of brake force. Now, of course, the downside is that you're adding a little bit of weight because you're adding an additional brake caliper and disc. PC5 also made a four card mount which works together with their whole shot device. It essentially enables you to put the whole shot device a lot further down on the fork guard because this mount is a lot more rigid than just screwing the plastic of the fork guard into the fork bottoms. The front forks are Elin's RX48s. With a custom setup for Supermoto and a spring rate that's adapted to my weight with gear. The front wheel is from Alpina and the hub is from PC5 that accepts the double disc system. And of course the rubber is from Michelin. The triple tree is from PC5 as well, which again works with a double brake system. And of course the master cylinder is from PC5 as well. Then I also have an AIM Solo 2 GPS system, which I can track my lap times with. Working my way rearwards, I have a Tecmo titanium and carbon fiber exhaust system and some nice little carbon fiber bits to protect the engine and the frame. Now we come to one of the most important bits if you want to improve the performance of the motorcycle, the rear suspension. So this rear suspension is from Elin's and it's their flow shot. I also changed the linkage to one from Spider. This linkage comes with something called eccentric bushings. So these bushings allows me to change the geometry of the entire linkage. And this allows me to adjust how progressive the rear suspension is. Everyone that sees this bike at the track is most interested in this bit. And that is of course the swing arm from Tecmo. So in theory, this swing arm provides a lot of flex at deep lean angles because of the way that it is constructed. Now I haven't seen any simulations of how it actually works, but at least in theory that's how it should work. What I do know is that it does provide a lot more traction for the rear wheel. In part 3 of this series we're going to mount a full spec race engine from Tomasin R&D in Italy, as well as an SP quick shifter. Now after that I'm not actually sure what I can do to this bike. What do you guys think I should do? Leave a comment down below of what you think I should do to the bike.